good to be here uh, in Glasgow today because it's a bit of a food day for, for myself uh, as food minister in Glasgow. I'm at this event for a, a short while, uh, obviously, and then I'm heading to the city of Glasgow College to be cooked lunch by Andrew Fairley. So, really tough gig. Uh, and I know you'll all be thinking about me, how hard I'm working when you're here um, going through your serious subjects at today's event. Although that is a very important event, actually, because all of Scotland's uh, top, uh, Glasgow's top chefs, I should say, are going to be at that event. Uh, and it's all to raise money for charity and, of course, to help promote good Scottish food produce amongst their local hotels and their chefs in, in Scotland at the same time. So it's actually quite an important event, not just to enjoy food that's going to be uh, cooked by Andrew Fairley. But of course, why it's important to be here today uh, to help open this symposium is because we're going to look at two key matters for our food and drink industry in Scotland. And these are, of course, the regulatory landscape and, of course, also industry standards. Now, you're going to hear from two esteemed professors who are going to follow me today, Charles Milne uh, and Russell Griggs. Charles, Russell and other speakers are going to provide a detailed insight into the work they are doing on reviewing red tape and, of course, at the same time, delivering high-quality food standards in, in Scotland. But before we get to their contributions, my job really is to clearly set out the importance of high-quality regulation and industry standards. These factors, as I'm sure we're all aware, absolutely underpin Scotland's reputation as a land of food and drink, and the importance of this reputation in turn to the continued success of our food and drink industry in Scotland. Now, Scotland's food and drink industry has been a fantastic success story over the past few years. And that story really is one that everyone in this room should be extremely proud of. Each person in this room, be you from the food industry or academia or the regulatory world, or perhaps as a student interested in a food career, you've all got a really valuable role and have been playing a very valuable role to play in that success over these years. <clears throat> and what success, even in the current economic climate, Scotland's food and drink industry is performing extremely well. And the success makes clear what, uh, why it's such a key part of Scotland's economic strategy at this time. The industry, of course, provides valuable employment opportunities across the country, particularly in rural and coastal areas. And as Rural Affairs Secretary, as well as being in charge of food policy and environment policy, that's something that's also very close to my heart. But it's also an industry, of course, which has got huge potential to create even more jobs in the future for Scotland. Now, commendably, the industry itself has set the target of reaching a turnover of £12.5 billion by 2017. A target, of course, that the government supports through our flagship national food and drink policy. And I am extremely proud, as Minister, to say that you are very well on track to reach that target later this year, a whole five years earlier than we ever imagined a few years ago when that target was set. So that really is an astonishing achievement. And in food and drink manufacturing alone, turnover has already broken the £9 billion mark for the very first time. So why all the success? Well, the prime reason, of course, is our, our vast array of high-quality products, and the importance of that high quality is something which I'll touch upon in a second or two, but quality is a mark of really hard work, passion and commitment to all those involved in Scotland's food and drink industry to deliver, at the end of the day, what consumers want on their plates. And now we're beginning to see the benefits of all that hard work, that commitment and that passion. Our national produce, be it salmon, whiskey, scotch beef, or many other products, has an incredibly positive reputation, both in this country, throughout these islands, and, of course, increasingly overseas as well. And as you all are aware of, Scotland has a reputation for our beautiful, unspoilt landscapes, our clean air, our pure water, and, of course, the traditions of good animal, animal husbandry. And consumers all over the globe understand this heritage and attach those values to our food and drink. So we are, quite rightly, recognised as having one of the best natural ladder, larders in the world. And the food and drink we rear, grow and make has a well-founded reputation for quality health and environmental sustainability at the same time. So let's be clear about this. The work that is done to protect and enhance that reputation by people like yourselves is a fundamental uh, property to the uh, commercial approach of many of your businesses. And the proof of the pudding they say is in eating and after consuming our produce, the world does want more. So demand for Scottish fare is increasing all the time. 
total food and drink exports reached an all-time high of £5.4 billion in 2011. That's an increase of 19% from the previous year and, of course, it smashed the 2017 target already for exports. And to support exports, I had the pleasure of representing Scotland at uh, this year's Gulf Food in Dubai. And I'm pleased to say that Scottish products were at the forefront of the prestigious International Food Trade Show. And to give you an indication, we had 14 companies out of the 3,500 companies that were there at Dubai. So Scotland only had 14 out of the 3,500 companies present there. Yet it was Scotland that com commanded a disproportionate share of the Middle East coverage of that event because they all wanted to talk about Scotland. And even the Middle East uh, chef, who has his own daily show on uh, local television, he invited myself on to talk about Scottish food and drink produce. He had the salt tyres, the bagpipes playing, Chef Osama, and he was uh, devoted his whole programme to Scottish food and drink in the middle of this uh, exhibition that was taking place in trade show. So again, just think about that. 14 companies out of the 3,500 were Scottish. Yet the media talked about Scotland all the time, and the, the Daily uh, Chef food show devoted its whole show to Scotland. So that's the mark that we're making around the world, and it's an indication of how people are turning on more and more uh, to the, the food and drink produce from this country. And of course, now, just this week, a fantastic confirmation that the United Arab Emirates is going to open up trade to Scottish beef. Uh, and of course, I was helping to negotiate that while I was over there. Uh, just a few months ago. But export sales are only a small part of our great uh, industry. Closer to home, we also have to remember that retail sales of Scottish brands have increased by over a third since 2007. That's an increase of nearly half a billion pounds. And as I've said, this enviable success and the invaluable reputation we do have is underpinned and protected by a framework of regulations and standards. So these provide the basis to ensure that our products are of the high quality that consumers expect and that they're safe and healthy to eat and that they contribute to the sustainability of our environment at the same time. So we have to make sure we continue to have that reputation and of course make sure that others don't exploit it for their own ends as well by perhaps claiming falsely Scottish provenance for their own produce. And these sort of issues are why the work done by our enforcement bodies are absolutely vital. And I really want to thank them for their hard work and continued vigilance to ensure the authenticity of products on our shop, sh shop shelves. But it's important that we in government, of course, balance the benefits and burdens of these regulations and standards. And I know that's an issue that's really important to many people in this room. And of course, that is a responsibility that I, as a Scottish Minister, and my colleagues in government take very, very seriously. The work that Professor Griggs will talk about in better regulation is an important part of that bigger picture. Uh, but of course, there are so many other initiatives as well. Just to give you a quick example, the Scottish Government has just issued a joint consultation with SEPA, our Environment Agency, on better environmental regulation. The consultation is not about introducing new obligations, it's about how we can work together better to better protect and improve Scotland's environment. And of course, that's really important, particularly for the, the food and drink industry in Scotland, because we rely so heavily on our natural assets for the ingredients that underpin um, our products. It's also important because of the opportunities the environment can offer in supporting that reputation, the green fields, the, cl the clear waters that, that I mentioned earlier. So the consultation is focused on how we can deliver environmental compliance moving forward so that resources are deployed where they can add most value. So we have to protect the environment, we have to reduce the unnecessary burdens on those who are regulated at the same time. We recognise that's all extremely important and as you'll also know, we have recently received the report of the Scudamore Review on the Food Standards Agency in Scotland. This was in part prompted by changes to the agency south of the border, which were done without consultation or prior notice, uh, where they took key functions like nutrition and labelling into central government away from the FSA south of the border. But in Scotland, we took a different view from the English perspective. We wanted to take a sensible look at how the agency operates in Scotland, including its meat hygiene service at the same time. We wanted the review to think carefully about the protection of public health, of course the prime concern, and we also wanted to review, uh, the review to advise us on the best delivery model for the Food Standards Agency in Scotland as well. And they have done all this and provided us with what we asked them for, and of course now ministers are busy considering all the recommendations we've received. 
So all of these initiatives on regulated reform hopefully show one thing, and that is that the Scottish Government is prepared to listen to industry, to adjust the current regimes, and to continue to work hopefully in partnership with all of you. This is a key part of our approach to governing Scotland. We want to make the absolute best of our country, and in the food and drink we really do have that fantastic opportunity to do just that. So to be the best, we need to develop and safeguard our reputation as the land of food and drink. That is the heart of our message. We do need to ensure the highest levels of public health. We have to maintain those levels. We need to support the excellent work of our professionals in regulation and public health and right across the whole of the industry. And we need to constantly evolve to match all the different challenges that keep hitting us, as well as grasping all the opportunities as well. And of course, I gave one example of one new opportunity, which is opening up some new markets in the Middle East to some of our products. So all of these factors together are really critical to the future success of our nation. So we need all of you in this room to continue to make that happen. We need you and many more people like you to forge the positive and successful careers in business and in regulation at the same time to adopt a collaborative approach and a constant striving for the highest standards, matched, of course, with proportionate regulation. I guess that's what the people of Scotland expect from all of us. So as I hope I've set out with the, the growth in our exports and the, the, the people of the world and what they expect from us, uh, that we can show how we can protect and enhance Scotland's reputation as that land of food and drink. The future is clear. We need to work together in the public and private sectors. We all need to together tell the story of what is our high quality, safe, nutritious and environmental sustainable uh, industry. That is the most precious message we have for our domestic consumers and for the rest of the world at the same time. I think we are striking that balance, but today of course is to perhaps talk about what more can be done and if there are lessons to be learned, how we can learn those lessons and if there's more knowledge to be shared, how we can share that knowledge at the same time. So this is a really important agenda today because I think that the food and drink sector in Scotland is going to go from strength to strength in years ahead. So we can't allow anything that's underpinned our success so far to be put at risk. So we have to at the same time be proportionate how we move forward. So we have to strike that balance. Uh, so good luck with today uh, and thank you for the opportunity to give you a few opening lines as well. Thank you.